to another episode of Jim's Farming. So, I'm um, on the drill. Uh, currently, on our, we've only got two, two fields, about 20 acres, a little bit over 20 acres of oilseed rate going in this year, in the rotation. And I'm on getting it in. So, it's been a bit of a frustrating week. Uh, so. I, probably saw in my last video, I was actually in this field and the one next door uh, with the auto steer working, um, with the flat lifts. Uh, we were me and Ari about getting our uh, cult, subtle cultivator in. But anyway, as it happens, we were a bit short staffed. Uh, I decided last night to go and make a start in the field next door, get the drill on and get that in. Uh, Dad today is at a sheep sale, looking to buy a new stock pram. Uh, so I'm torn between drilling and combining. So if I was combining it would just be me combining and lugging, so not ideal. Um, so anyway, we're getting the oil seed raping. Uh, going in quite nicely, there's quite a nice bit of moisture going in. There's also quite a lot of trash. I'm just going to have to put the camera down for a second. Um, sorry that you're on the start. So, yeah, like I said, there's a fair bit of trash. Uh, that is there for a reason. Uh, we did cut the stubble a little bit. Long, slightly longer on here than we normally would. Um, same in the other field. Um, because we're just trying to help hide our little vulnerable oilseed rape plants when they finally come up from the dreaded flea beetle. So as well as that, this year we're also companion cropping. There we go, we're just staring in. Uh, well, anyway, uh, yeah, we're companion cropping the oilseed rape with some buckwheat and clover. Um, to be honest, there's kind of limited evidence. I think some say it does help hide, hide the and mask the oilseed rape from flea beetle, cabbage stem flea beetle. But uh, whether it does or doesn't, we'll see. But also, the the, nut, the clover will fix a bit of nitrogen, and the buckwheat will hopefully scavenge a little bit of phosphate out of the soil which will then become available to the rape when um, it gets killed off by the frost in the winter hopefully we have a frost so that's the current plan on doing this it's pretty hard going we are well like i said i've been through with the flat lift it's done quite a good job of actually um, breaking up the soil there it's definitely probably struggle to get in here with uh, going straight in without that but that's done a nice job it hasn't disturbed the soil too much so we retain quite a lot of moisture which you can see coming up a little power hour working a bit you know it's probably in six inches maybe five or six inches um, just to do a good old mix with the with the straw and the trash and the seeds just being placed just in the in in the soil with a press wheel just uh, pushing pushing that down get a nice bit of seed to soil contact so yeah uh, I'm on auto steer anyway and in the other tractor so yesterday afternoon I had a bit of a rush and managed to get this thing fixed up in a fashion is actually working quite well it's uh, in a couple of centimeters it's a bit rickety a bit like the one I've got in the 6230 well it's the same unit I've just 
drilled a new hole in there, bolted that on and popped your uncle. Uh, a few cables, antenna on the roof, on the window, stuck to the window there. Uh, steer on the angle sensor, fits very nicely down in the bottom there. Uh, cable through the door, and there we go, did have a bit of a hiccup. Um, caught that in that lapse last night, and I was wondering why I didn't get a GPS signal, so that's going to have to be rectified at some point, it's a bit annoying. Uh, but there we go, we're getting on and we have our RTK and it's doing a very nice job and I'm not having to steer, so ideal, it is good. It's, uh, it's done a very nice job over there, over, over the hedge, you won't be able to see from here, but um, I actually used the AB lines from when I was in here cultivating the other day, going up and down the wheel, field, the straight AB in line, and also the AB curve that I put in doing the headlands. Uh, that worked really well. You can see up across there, lovely straight lines. It, this gadget here, well this setup I put out that looks so Heath Robinson and rough and ready. It's amazing how good a job it does. Uh, yeah, very, very happy with it. Calm down. Up a few gears and let's fire away. Yeah, the other annoying thing about this drill, our old drill just had, it was just a hopper that came down to a sort of central outlet meter and of course, really simple, great. This thing, I gotta say, uh, yeah, all right, it's, Seems all right, good. This is our second season with it. First, well, I've dropped a few small seeds with it before, but it is a pain in the ass to change all the, there's a, each, well, the hopper has two little outlets and there's two metering wheels, which meter to either side, so you can actually get it to shut one side off if you want, or the other side. Um, never bother with that. But it's got two sets of multiple little flutes, fluted wheels and you have to engage those with a little nuts in it. It is so fiddly and when you have small seeds and small amounts of seeds there's a divide down the middle of the tank and it goes one side or the other and you've got to keep, make sure both are even, make sure you've got seed going to both sides. So it, yeah, one thing about this drill I don't like uh, is that this tractor wasn't supposed to be drilling so this would fudge it up a bit quick because we were expecting another tractor. Anyway, like everything, everything's gone nuts with COVID. Um, uh, well, the tractor we're supposed to be having is, we ordered it with a front linkage and a, and a loader. So the, the front linkages are quite a fancy for us. We've never had one before. And then we put this weight block on here with the, with the hydraulics on the uh, front suspension on the tractor which is also quite fancy and MTT for us here. But uh, yeah, so that's supposed to be coming. That's going to come later because of supply chain issues. Uh, and we're still waiting on the tractor. So it's very close, it won't be long, but it's just a shame it's not here to, to do this job. Uh, it's just, yeah, a bit of a nuisance. So. There we are, so tell you what, I'm not far off actually last year with my tram lines. So I've got a tram line going in now. Um, and I, you can just see I've probably overlapped a little bit. I'm not sure what went on down in the, the bottom end, but I'm way over, way overlapped there. But here, nothing. Yeah, it's uh, I'm just perfect. Isn't it? Yeah, so we've got 3M markers, little discs that drop down behind the coulters and kind of kick this trash over to the right hand side, you can kind of see that. Um, they run off the hydraulic, uh, the oil flow from the fan, there's a little solenoid there which gives them a, I think it probably takes the flow away and lets it drop down. Uh, See that way the other way. Um, and yeah, and then the cobs also get shut off. This was a field I had the problem with putting the wheat in last year. Funnily enough, that was the first field which I planted last year with wheat with this drill. And this 
this is the second field I've had of the week and then had that issue. And it's the first and second fields I've drilled this time. Plan today, I can hopefully get this finished. And we can just, just after lunch, get this in. We finish this by five or six o'clock and back home and straight out of the combine. Combine service, ready to go, fueled up, uh, oiled, greased, everything else. Uh, and yeah, get out and um, knock off some wheat until it gets too wet. And I imagine by this evening it will be pretty dry. Uh, Neighbour who's cutting on the uh, with, the, with all the combines they were on having a go last night. And um, there's got below 15%. And we've had more sun today than we had yesterday. So. Uh, uh, better that again today and um, the forecast isn't bad the forecast is quite good I think uh, definitely priority to get this rolled in so uh, just on the headland uh, going to get this field finished this evening I think and then uh, we're going to have to get a couple of trailers of grain filled with the combine but uh, yeah I just thought I'd show you the last thing um, so I've got the AB curve going, I did say about it before. But, um, just on the headland, uh, you see there I've just got one more pass I'm going to do. So when I've got a, like, I've got the end headlands, um, I normally do five, uh, five swipes, so 15 metres. Uh, that is, so when I'm spraying and I'm turning along it, nice and smooth and um, like when you get the pre-em marks in and you pass the passes and stuff I do find it can be a bit rough especially with the sprayer so I do five runs on the end lens sort of thing and then when I've got I call sort of butts uh, you can do shorts like this down the sides uh, I'll just do four so, um, it's not so rough going along it um, but why, why I was saying about that the great thing about this uh, after I've done a map uh, like map the perimeter of the field um, which is that sort of line there you can see that well I can bring in a headland which is this yellow line so when I'm doing my ups and downs in, in the middle of the field I know just to go over that 12 meter line and that'll give me 12 meters um, and uh, I'm not wasting too much seed. Three, three trailers full. So 
So uh, we, get, we get up and get off over this evening until it gets dark. Uh, the moisture is about 14.3, so it's a lot drier than anything we've got already. So we've got a plenty of uh, room uh, moisture-wise to keep going until it gets too dewy. Yeah, I'll just cut down through the middle here. I've had a few swipes off the headlands and off the, uh, off the outsides. But yeah, I don't think we'll be on too late. I, I think the two will cut down pretty heavy and go up. But uh, yeah, so far so good. This is actually the worst part of the field as well. So um, this is the old seed that I keep talking about. Uh, it's a bit patchier over that side. Over that side, I hope it for a bath better. That's good. Um, I'm going to be bathing the shore. We're having a shore up here. Um, got another, we've got another 10 acres of shore side for this. This field is about 16 acres. Um, then we've got another 12 acre field that another acre is going to gonna have.